Okay, welcome back to our lessons about getting started with uh, the machine project. So in this lesson, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about what happens when your app starts up. And we'll look at how one of the ways, using Android Studio, that we can collect a little bit of information about what's going on in the app, which we frequently need to do when we're debugging or trying to fix a problem. Um, okay, so in Android, and we'll talk a little bit about some of these concepts later, but just as a broad overview, and there, there's a class called activity that represents something that a screen on the app. So any screen in the app that a user can interact with can be represented by this activity class. And there's usually an activity that's launched when the app starts up. In this case, this is called the main activity. And so if you look at this, this is Java code. There are, there's more of it. There's a lot of comments that we've put in to try to explain what's going on, but you should recognize things here. This is a public final class, it's called main activity. It extends a class that's provided by Android called app compat activity, which is sort of the, the super class of activities. Um, and this is what we use. This determines what happens when the app starts. Um, and in particular, Android has this concept of a life cycle, and there are certain methods on this class that are called at certain points when the app is running. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that you can find out what's going on here. What I'm gonna show you how to do is to use something called Android login that allows us to do something sort of similar to print, uh, system.out.println style debugging, adding statements, figure out, okay, which part of the code is executing, what's the value of this variable at a particular point, stuff like that. Okay, so this is this method called onCreate, and this is the first method that's called when our app begins to run. And you'll notice that the code in here, so this is an app that displays a map, and then it's gonna add some information to the map, and we're gonna to work together on sort of improving some of the functionality and features and the information that's displayed and stuff like that over the course of the project. But it's already able to do a few things, and there's some information in this onCreate method about what happens when the app starts. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna use my emulator, so if you want to follow along, have an emulator set up and ready to use, and let's go ahead and, and run the app um, and, and see what happens, right? So when I run the app, what should happen is it's going to start up and it's going to display a map. And there are going to be uh, markers on the map that correspond to favorite places that were nominated by uh, CS124 staff and some faculty. So I can zoom out here, I see a map of the Champaign-Urbana area. Um, so first of all, let's, you know, the other thing we can do when we experiment, we can add some logging, we can also um, change things and see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is, so you can use the system.out.println in Android just the way you would in your normal Java code, uh, and I'll put something like entering on create, oh, these pop-ups are really annoying. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun the app. I can click this button right here, which will cause it to restart. But I also, you might be wondering like, where do the logs show up? And so when I wanna see the log messages, I'm gonna open, go down here to the bottom, and there's this tab called LogCat. I'm gonna open this up, and by default, this is showing me logging information generated by my application. So let's rerun the application. I'm gonna use this button, it's gonna ask me, uh, oh, I guess it didn't, maybe I, I just told it to do that, okay. Um, and now I'm looking at the information that's being generated by my app. And if I scroll around a little bit here, you'll see right here, this says uh, entering on create. That's the output from system.out.println. You'll notice that it's generated here. Um, there's a lot of output that's generated by our application. So to organize it, Android provides this idea of a log tag. When I use system.out.println, the log tag I get is system.out. And that can be okay. Like if I just wanted to see that, I could do system.out. And now I just see the message that was generated by the extra instrumentation that I added here. But a lot of, but you know, it's, it's the, the, the more common way to do this in Android is to do, uh, is to use this logging feature. And this accepts two things. The first is a tag that identifies this message. And this is useful because frequently I wanna group messages together so I can only see a certain set of messages that have the same tag. So I'm gonna use the tag that's already present here, and I'll use the same message called entering on create. 
uh, close that. So log.i is sort of like system.println, but the first argument is this tag. And in this case, the tag is going to uh, be main activity. So let's rerun the app again. Um, now this time, if I look for system.out, I'm not going to see anything. But if I look for main activity, I see a, the same message that I used before, but now the tag is main activity. So that's pretty useful. So that's how we can add login information. And you can put these log messages wherever you want uh, throughout your Android application, and you'll see them in this output below your code and your emulator. Um, you know, as you're, as you're working, this can be a, a really important way to figure out what's going on. All right, so, so now, you know, uh, I would encourage you on your own time to go through some of the code here uh, that's displayed and get a sense of like what's going on, try to read the commentary. If you have questions, ask on the forum. We're happy to talk about the starter code. Um, but let's try, try just like changing some things here to, to see what happens. So, um, so first thing we can do is uh, right now, you'll notice that if I zoom out, uh, I can only zoom out so far and and then it, it won't allow, allow me to zoom out anymore. And that's set here, right? So essentially this sets the minimum zoom level. Zoom levels are, um, as you, the zoom level goes up, the map gets smaller, you're zoomed in more. Um, so this limits the degree to which I could zoom out. So I could try changing that. Um, this also sets the area that the map will display. And the reason for this is because uh, the we've set up our own um, server to provide the tiles for the map, which are behind the map that show information about the area. The reason for this is that these um, the servers that provide these tiles can potentially be under a lot of load. And so we wanted to limit the impact of our app on the public infrastructure that the OpenStreetMap project provides. So we set up our own uh, server for that purpose. Um, but let's turn that off. So let's comment out this line right here. And what I'm expecting to happen now when I rerun the app is that there will not be, um, yeah, so now I can uh, just hit uh, terminate, it'll restart the app. What I'm expecting now is that there's no, um, there's no tiles that are displayed. Now what's interesting is the, the markers are still there, but there's no backdrop. Right, so that's one little experiment I can perform, and I, I would encourage you to to do some other things. You know, this is your code base now, and if you're careful, you can run experiments and you can see what happens, and 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 on and on. Right. So the next thing I just want to talk about briefly, because I think it's important to understand, although we'll be, we will talk about it more later, is where the tiles, where the markers are coming from. Why are the markers being displayed? So the next thing we need to talk about to to have this conversation is let me go back and let me take off this message. So on create, you can almost think of it as like a constructor for the activity. It's not an actual constructor, um, but it functions in a similar way. It's called once when the activity is created. Every time the activity is shown again to the user, so let's say the user puts the activity in the background, sorry, puts the app in the background and then brings it back to the foreground, this other method called on resume is, is run. And it's an on resume that we start the process of acquiring the information that then gets displayed on the map. Um, and so I want to use the logging capabilities to trace this process to gain a little bit of a, a, a more understanding about what's happening when the app starts up. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, rerun it with this new logging in. Um, and I'll sit, don't ask again, and I'll, well, it's okay. Just hit terminate. Um, and so I'm looking at this main activity and now I see that I'm entering on resume. And what I do is I run this method called get places. And this method contacts the server that's also part of the application, which we'll talk about more particularly a little bit later when we get to MP2 and asks it for the list of places that, uh, or for information about places that it knows about. These are the favorite places that were contributed by staff and, and some of the faculty members here in the department. So now you might be wondering like, well, this is weird because what it just calls this, but then what happens? So what happens actually, and, and we'll talk about why this is more when we talk a little bit more about Android networking, it rather than just grabbing the list of places and then displaying them, it has to provide what's called a callback. So one metaphor here is almost like, you know, when you call up some places and there's going to be a long wait, a lot of times they'll sometimes time sometimes today maybe not a lot of times but sometimes they'll say hey why don't you give us a number and we'll call you back when we can help you and this is sort of what this main activity is doing 
It's telling the client, hey, go get the list of places. But I know this might take a little while because you have to ask the network and there's some slow operations involved. So when you're done, here's how to contact me. And what it does is it passes a callback. This is something that uh, implements this particular interface called a consumer, which allows the client to hand back the list of places to the main activity when the networking call completes. And that's well, how we get into this method. So I'm gonna put more log in here. So we're gonna do log.i. Now the different log levels you can use again to organize your logging. Log.i is for information, it's like debugging messages. Uh, or informational messages, D is for debugging. There's different levels and if you configure, um, and, and those can be configured in logcat output so I can only see things at a certain level. So now I'm gonna say, um, I'll say list of places is available because what's being passed to this accept method is a list of place. It's wrapped inside this result my throw class that there was some explanation about why that is on that class. Um, but this is sort of the next thing that I expect to happen. And so now, again, I'm gonna uh, perform some experiments by commenting out some code and see what happens. So now I'll hit uh, rerun again. And now you'll see that the list of places is available, but there's no places shown on the map. And that's because I haven't called this method called update shown places, which is listed below. And this is the method that, and again, there's, there's pretty good commentary on this method, that goes through, takes this list of place information and creates the markers on the map, which then causes OpenStreetMaps or this OSM Droid library that we're using to render OpenStreetMaps on Android to draw the markers. And so, you know, when the app starts up, you know, this on resume method is called, it goes out to the server, retrieves information about the places, and then it hands that information. And this is just a list of places. This is not something that, you know, you should find super confusing. The place model is located over here uh, in place.java. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in MP1 because we have a little bit of work to do with this in order to get things to work a little better. Um, but this is just a list of places. The place is just a Java class that has information, a couple different fields about the place that is, you know, the places, the information that we have about the place, where it is, the lat long, who contributed it, a uh, unique ID for it, and then a description. Um, and this method down here, update shown places, is what actually goes through and goes through that list and updates all the markers on the map. And so if I don't call it, those markers don't appear. I'll uh, take out my logging, uh, or sorry, I'll take out the change I made, commented out that called update places, and now what you'll see is that um, that list of places is, is shown again. Um, now, if, if we center the map differently, and that's actually one of your challenges for MP0s to figure out how to do that, you'll notice that there is a small delay between when the app starts up and when the list of places is shown. We can't see it right now because we're starting off too zoomed in. Uh, maybe we can fix that. Let me actually change, um, let's see here. So let's, instead of saying map default zoom, I think that's too far. Let's do like, uh, four, let's try this, let's try 14. Uh, I'll restart this again, terminate, right? So you see that? See how when it started up, I'll rerun it again. Boom, right? So there is this little delay, that's that callback, right? So the main activity starts up, it tells the, this uh, networking client, hey, contact the server, grab a list of places for me, but that takes a moment to complete. Until it does, that list of places isn't populated. Once it comes back, once we have that information, we draw the map properly, and now I see these markers. Okay, so that's a little bit of an overview about, about two things. First of all, the code that we provided in mainactivity.java, and a little bit about what happens when the app starts up and how to use logging to investigate things as we go. One of the things I wanna really point out um, that's important about this project is that we've given you starter code. There is code that you are beginning with and you do need to have some level of understanding of what that code does. Does your understanding have to be perfect? No, but you need to have some amount of understanding because you're gonna be modifying it and augmenting it and changing things and fixing things. This is very, very common when you work in the world of software creation. Most of you are never gonna write little 50 line programs. You're gonna be working on large projects with other people that have lots and lots of lines of code, hundreds of thousands, millions of lines of code, and you're never gonna understand all of it. 
Your job is to understand the parts that you need to in order to perform whatever thing it is that you're trying to do. And so there's some tenuous balance here that we strike as software creators when we work on large projects between you know, thinking that, okay, the first thing I have to do is sit down and read every line of code and understand all of it because on a big project, even on a medium-sized project, even on most small projects, that's not possible. And at the same time, having a level of understanding that's required in order to make changes, add new features, fix bugs, and do the types of things that software creators do on a daily basis. So this project is intended to give you a little bit of a feeling of what that's like. You are probably not gonna understand every line of code in the project at any one given point in time, it's hard to load all that into your working memory, but what you will need to do is be able to zero in, think about a particular part of the code, understand how it's interacting with other pieces, and be able to make some simple changes and add some code. And of course, we walk through all of this very, very intentionally together because we know you're new at it and it takes practice. So anyway, best of luck. We're getting started with this. Next couple walkthroughs, we'll talk about how to, uh, how to use the test suites and then also how to submit.